Last time on Breaking Down the Nightfall Saga, we saw the beginnings of Bruce Wayne's search, search for Chandra Kin solving. This time, we are seeing the start of Asbat's career now that he has beat Bane. Specifically, we're reviewing Detective Comics 667 and 668. These issues are written by Chuck Dixon with pencils by Graham Nolan, by Scott Hanna, colors by Adrian Roy, lettering by John Costanza, and is edited by Darren Vincenzo and Scott Peterson. We begin the first of these issues with some tourists in Gotham wandering through the park at night and who get attacked by hooligans. Hooligans who are in turn attacked by Asbats. Elsewhere, a bank robber with a cowboy gimmick runs into another bank robber with a cowboy gimmick, who, strangely enough, turns out to be his twin brother. The two decide to adjourn to a bar to discuss this odd turn of events. In the Batcave, Jean-Paul is having some nightmares about St. Dumas. After waking up, he goes to Tinker and discovers the rocket-powered subway car that Harold built and presumably had intended to show off to Bruce at some point before things happened. Elsewhere in Gotham, the, the Cowboy Twins, they don't have a name for them yet, but they are the new Trigger Twins, go to rob mobster Dan Doyle, who runs Numbers Rackets. In the course of the robbery, Doyle offers them a job instead. Meanwhile, Jean-Paul is taking the Bat Rocket subway car for a test drive. He likes how it handles, but not the, quote, unnecessary passenger seat. And if that isn't a blatant enough hint for what he's talking about, at that time, Tim goes to take the secret underground passage to the Bat Cave from the Drake house, only to discover that John Paul bricked it up. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, elsewhere in Gotham, the Trigger Twins clip a mob guy who was muscling into Doyle's territory. The mob guy's reaction is odd. They laugh them off as potentially harmless because of their gimmick, when it's safe to assume that, you know, in comic book universes, criminals with costume gimmicks are a lot less rare. I mean, yeah, the Royal Flush Gang is usually the group that ends up showing up to be taken down by the Justice League or members thereof um, to kick off a story, but still, these have to be a little more common, right? The issue ends with the Bat Rocket subway car about to crash into a train, which is why you check the train schedules before you run something like this. The next issue begins with Asbat evading certain death by pulling an instant 180, which has to give him whiplash something fierce. The next morning, Tim gets his driver's license in the mail. Back at Doyle's pace, the Trigger Twins get paid and get their villain team name, which call calls out the pre-crisis version of the character, which was a West from a Western book along the lines of, say, Jonah Hex. And they also get their next job, a train robbery, specifically the money train, the train that transports each day's fare collections in Gotham from Gotham Mass Transit. That night, Robin breaks into the Batcave to get his ride, a sports car called the Redbird, bemoaning John Paul's neglect of the cave. Around this time, also, at Caliber Productions, film studio executive Mr. Berkowitz gets a call from one of Batman's rogues with a pitch for a biopic. A rogue with a killer smile. You know, it's amazing what an iconic character design can do with just a smile. In the Batcave, Robin reaches his car when John Paul, who had removed the passenger seat from the subway rocket and replaced it with computer readouts, tries to stop him. They fight, and the issue ends with John Paul having Robin by the throat. Is this the end of Riders in the Sky? But seriously, this is a cliffhanger aside. These are really good couple of issues. I know this isn't a complete arc. Um, we are going to return to the Trigger Twins, late, Twins later. But this cliffhanger is resolved at the start of a different arc. So I'll get into next month as we begin the start of Robin's first solo ongoing. <laughs> The 
thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.